Hey everyone, I wanted to take a minute here and uh, show you something that I use pretty much on a daily basis. And uh, maybe you'll find this helpful or not. I look at a lot of network traces in my day-to-day -day troubleshooting. And one of the scripts that I run, uh, the health check script for MPS, creates uh, an ETL network trace. Uh, you know, you can use NetSH to capture a network trace um, without having to actually install something like Wireshark. So a lot of customers do that because they're not allowed to install Wireshark in their environment. The problem is, is that I like to use Wireshark because I like the filtering. Uh, uh, just in general, there's a lot of things I like about using Wireshark. So how do I get these ETL files into a format that Wireshark can use? So the way that I do that is through the use of Netmon. Netmon can read these ETL files, but you have to go through a little bit of a conversion process. So I've, ne I've never done that on this VM, so you're gonna see some of the things that need to be done uh, when you first install Netmon. So uh, if you've never opened an ETL file, just go in here, uh, right click, and uh, do an open with Netmon. Uh, Netmon will eventually show up. Now, if you notice, I don't actually have any, what appears like I have no network traffic in here, but you can see over here, it's showing you that there's TCP and NDIS and everything else. And the reason for that is, if you've never used Netmon before, it's using the, the default settings for your profile. So go to Tool Options, go to your Parser Profiles, and switch this to Windows. Set that as active. You'll see this filter again in the background. Netmon is not the fastest in parsing things. Uh, this is a very small trace. Now we've got actual network source and destination. But I still need to do some more things. So, the, so what I do is I, I want to filter out all these events that Wireshark will know nothing about. Uh, so the way I do it is I create a filter and apply that filter. And once this is applied, it will remove everything but TCP or UDP traffic. So everything we care about. Once it's filtered, then all I need to do is go up here and say file save as, give it a name, and make sure to check this box, displayed frames. Let me stick this out here on the desktop and save that. All right, so now I've saved it. If I go out here to the desktop, you can see my cap is already associated with Wireshark. And now I can open it up uh, with Wireshark and be able to uh, do all my filtering and uh, network trace viewing using Wireshark. And so there's several reasons I like Wireshark. Um, specifically, I do a lot of uh, MPS and radius troubleshooting. And so one of the things that I like to do is be able to um, decode PAP traffic. And Wireshark can do that. Netmon can't do that. Um, if you know the shared secret between the Radius client and the MPS server, uh, Wireshark gives you the ability to decode that traffic or rather decrypt that traffic. So now I've got all my uh, packets here. The other thing I like about Wireshark, it's very easy to create and save uh, filters. So let me filter out everything but, or let me get rid of the RDP traffic. So now I'm looking at pretty much everything else. 
uh, I want to look at radius traffic. There's no radius traffic in this. But it's very easy to create a filter. Once you type in a filter that you want and you apply it, it does what you want. Just click on the little plus button here and you can give it a name and save it. And then they'll show up over here. Anyway, that is a little thing I wanted to share because uh, I've run across some folks that, like me, prefer to look at uh, network traces through Wireshark, but they're stuck trying to look at these ETL files. So hopefully that helps. If there's anything else uh, y'all would like to see, let me know.